We have a look to see how we can create front-end forms for users to submit posts for either a normal post and the same form can be used for a custom post. So we've already installed the Advanced Custom Fields Pro plugin and if we look at the Custom Fields menu options available, we've got Field Groups, Add New, Tools and Updates. To make this work though, we need to create a front-end form. And to do that, we're going to use another plugin, which is called Advanced Custom Fields Extended. So we're going to activate that, and then we'll have a look and see at the new field, the new, the new menu options available for custom fields when that plugin is installed. If we hover over custom fields now, you'll see we have a lot more options. We have the field groups add new, but we also have categories, block types, forms, options pages, settings, tools and updates. So for this demonstration we're going to have a look at the forms inside this advanced custom fields extended plugin. So the first thing to do to get started is to go and create a field group which we'll use then to create our new post. Here we are on the field groups and we'll call that news posts. We're going to use the standard WordPress post so the post type will be equal to post right let's add some fields so let's go news title so the news title will essentially be a text field and let's make that a required field next thing we'll add will be the news image and to make this the featured image for the post, we'll scroll down to the field type and we'll change that to image. What we'll also do is we'll make this selection yes. And that ensures that this image becomes the featured image for the post. We'll also make this a required field. Right, let's add another field and let's add the content field. So we'll call that news content. And in this case, we'd be looking for a YC Wig editor. What you see is what you get. We'll also make that a required field. So all the fields so far are required if you want to submit a post. That completed, one more field to go, and that'll be the categories for the post. Add a field. And we'll call that news categories. And this will be a relational field. And we'll make that taxonomy. Scroll down a bit. We'll also make that required. The taxonomy that we'll select will be category. And in this case, it's the standard category. And the appearance will be a checkbox. We'll allow the user to create terms. And we're ready to publish our field group and it's now ready to be used in the front-end form. So the next stop to creating our front-end form then is to head over to forms. Let's create a new form. And the form we'll do is submit news and let's call that news submission and we'll select our field group and the only field group available of course is news posts let's publish that this ensures that the custom fields will then show up in the next batch of settings that we need to go and have a look at so now we have the option to look at the action to perform using this uh, configuration so we'll add an action, and you'll see we have several options available. A custom action, an email, a post, a term, and a user action. So in this case, we're going to create a post action. And here we have two options straight off the bat. One is to create a post, and one is to update a post. So we'll go with create post, and the action name we'll just leave as post. What we'll do first is we'll go and have a look at what loads when the form is displayed and then we'll have a look and see what is saved when we save the form. So the first thing that we're going to do is look at what to load when it 
loads the form. So the only field that we really need to put in or, or link up here is to say that the source needs to be a post. So the only link here is that we're creating a current post. And if we scroll down, we can make sure that all the custom fields are loaded on the front end. If we don't select the field here, it won't appear in our form. With those selected, we'll then head over and say, look at what must happen when we save the form. So this looks at linking our custom field to the post. First thing we're going to do is select post type, which is post, but you could have a custom post type and select the custom post type in the same way. The post status for a new post submitted will be draft. And the post title then will be the news title. The slug will be the default slug as created by WordPress, post content. There we'll have a look at our custom field, the news content. Post author will be left at default post parent at default and then the post term so the post term that we're looking for is the categories custom field so just keep going down the list and eventually you will come to the custom fields and from there you'll see there's the news post options and we'll select news category so now we've linked the custom field to the post setting. With that in place, we will then say update. Once that is updated, we'll have a look at some of the other settings available inside the form. So here we'll head over to settings. We're not going to look at any other rules. So the field groups, locations rules, where the field groups will be displayed, we're not going to make any adjustments there whether or not to create a form element. Yes, we do want to create the form element. And then the form attribute. So we can wrap this form in our own class. So we'll do that just in case we want to uh, create another form and we don't want the default styling then to apply to this form and another form. We can then also look at a class to be added to all fields. So here we could do wrap form so we'll just say uh, maybe submit news field so you get the idea we then have the submit button which we yes of course we do need and then here we can change the text that's on the submit button so we'll go with submit news here's the HTML so once again here you can make some updates and adjustments you might want to set a different class so this is where you can change that and then this is the spinner while the form is being loaded here of course you have the option to uh, dissuade spam so we have the honeypot option which we've set to yes and then to sanitize the entries in the form make sure there's no malicious code being entered we have the KSES um, function which then will eliminate any harmful code in terms of the uploader we're not uploading any um, images or documents if you were you could change the selection here the field elements are wrapped in a div but of course you can change that then we've set the label placement to the top which is pretty standard so we'll leave it there and then any instruction placements we've set to uh, default to label. However, we don't have any instructions, so we can leave it at that. When we move over to HTML, um, there's HTML before the render and HTML after the render. There's nothing that we need to do there, and we're not going to override the form render either. So, nothing for us to do here. On the validation, Uh, we're not validating any fields, but we could if we wanted to. Um, so we're not going to be looking at anything here. And when we look at submission, what we will say is that when the form is submitted, let's, let's hide the form. We're not going to redirect in, in this case. And we'll say, um, thank you for sub submitting news 
we'll leave it at that those are pretty much all the settings that we need to um, set for the form to work if you're a developer and you're looking to extend further there is a cheat sheet here which is attached to the form and in the cheat sheet you will find a ton of information and references that you might need for other development purposes what you'll also find is that on submissions there are some hooks that you can hook into with advanced custom fields and they are laid out here and in fact there is some code then that you can use if you want to do something based on one of the hooks available so a lot of nice easy to access code detailing what needs to be done or what you can use to to do something let's head over now to installing this on a page so what we'll do is we'll copy this short code here on the right hand side and under pages we'll add a new page and we'll copy and paste that in and then we'll be able to submit news on the front end so here we have our page and we'll call that new submission and we'll head over to WordPress and do a standard short code content element insert the short code we publish our page we'll view the page right so here we have our form so the news title will be new news title let's add an image so the image we just pull in from the normal media library within WordPress so let's choose that picture right and we'll add some content and we've allowed media to be uploaded here so you can create any news post information that you want here's where we select the category that we'd like it to belong to and we then submit the news when we submit the news the form will be hidden and we'll be thanked for uploading our news article thank you for submitting news so now we know that that post was submitted we'll head over into the website we'll head over to posts and here we'll see that post saved as a draft entry right there's the new news title let's go in and edit that post so here we are looking at our post in the back end and the first thing that you'll notice is we have this message here that says this block has encountered an error and cannot be previewed this looks like a bug with the new version of WordPress to remove that simply click on the change block type or style change that transform to group so you'll see there's an error here with the block allocation this looks like a bit of a disconnect between uh, the new version of WordPress and the form submission using advanced custom fields in the way that we've done it simply click on that convert to blocks and you will see that the information is then visible so there's the article that we submitted converted to a block let's scroll down there we see the news title so the new news title will be new news title the content has now been allocated to the content of the post here we have the test category selected and if we look at categories on the right hand side you'll see that the test category has been selected as well as the default category which WordPress automatically assigns so as we're editing this newly upload a draft version simply deselect uncategorized we can now publish our post and we go and have a look at our post now looking at our post we have new news title we have the category we have the featured image and there we have some content for this article 
So very easily we were able to submit the form and have the form then be inserted as a draft post, the form information as a draft post and then easily go to that post, check it and update the status. What might be nice if you have users submitting posts is to allow them to send you an email to say that they've submitted a post, something that the user won't do but something that you can automate within the forms plugin. So we head back to the forms plugin for custom fields and there we have our submit news form. We go and have a look at our form and what we want to do now is add another action. So the first post action was to create a post. The second action that we'll create then is an email action. So that will be an email action and what we want this to do is send us an email when this form is submitted. We'll head along to email so it'll be from, so it'll be from this uh, whoever we want, in this case from this domain to who, so we'll make that an email address, a reply to, um, a CC, a BCC and a subject. We can say new post submitted. Here yeah, we can put in a new post has been submitted. And here we can put in some field values, the field, the field key or the field, the field title. So we can include some information in the email and in order to get that information we can head over to the cheat sheet which then contains a long list of the different options available. For the purposes of this demo we're just going to have a look at how that email would work. So what we'll do now is we'll head over to the front end of the website and we'll submit another form. So we'll head over to pages quickly. We'll then go to new submission. And we'll go to view. We'll say submit new news to. We'll add our image. So let's select a different image. Right, then we'll add more content. Scroll down, we'll select test again and we'll submit the news. The news has been submitted. Let's have a look at the email that was generated. So here is a copy of the post. So there we have the title. We said new post submitted. A new post has been submitted. We can of course now include in the content some of the content from that post. We can also then include a link to that post for editing purposes. However, just for this demo you can see that the email is fired immediately and sent to the designated person. So that's how easy it is then to create a, a form that the user can submit and then to fire off an email to let you know that a new post has been submitted. In the next uh, video we'll have a look and see how you can edit the post on the front end and don't need to log into the back end in order to edit and approve the post. So thank you for watching.